you know, we, we got stomped first two rounds and then we realized, and then we come back and won a round. Like it was, you just got to go through that as a paintball team. And if you can stick with the same, let's say core six, cause it's usually just six, um, then you, you'll get that. You'll get it if everyone's got the same goal. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Down Under Paintball. This is episode 17 and this week we are sitting down with Ryan Jacker, one of the players off Sydney SWAT. Ryan's going to sit down and have a chat to us, let us know all about himself as well as a review of the seven-man hyperball event from last weekend at Action Paintball Yarramundi. This is a new format that I'm trying out, so as events come up, we're going to do some reviews of them. Of course, this one didn't really have a lot of prep, so there wasn't a field map or anything to look at. So we just sort of winged it, and you've got to use your imagination a little bit. I feel like I did Ryan a little bit of a disservice. We sort of rushed through his story and then rushed through the review. So I think in the future, we'll probably give a little bit more time to these reviews. But I'm looking forward to the world reopening slowly and tournament paintball returning. So we can do more of these. And as well as my regular interviews, we can have some of these episodes where we just try and grow the sport and make better paintball players. And last but not least, I just want to say a massive shout out to this episode's sponsors. And that's my patrons over on Patreon. So we've got three on there now. We've got Terrence, Will, and Neil. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Yeah, it means so much to me that you guys are getting on there and helping directly support me for doing this. And thanks everyone else for all your kind words uh, back and forth all the time. A lot of people messaging in the show. It really means a lot to me. Going to see some uh, upgrades that that Patreon money is going towards very shortly. So thank you very much, everyone out there for supporting the show. We're going to jump right into this episode with Ryan Jacker and the Hyperball 7-Man Review. Okay, I need to find paintball again. If that's the kind of commitment you're going to give, then that's the kind of commitment I want. So I'm sticking. You're listening to Down Under Paintball. I mean, everybody on that team was a veteran. Everybody. This is Will McDonald, and you're listening to Down Under Paintball. It does make it a more interesting sport for the masses. They are doing it better than anyone else, to be honest. Yeah, show show other women that might be interested in playing that, hey, you know, you can go out there and you can be successful in this sport. It's best. I've got the best seat in the house with some of the best paintball in Australia. And you listen to Down Under Paintball. I don't, I don't enter into the politics. I'm not interested. I'm just trying to, you know, grow the sport, get more people playing paintball. Joining me on the show this week... The only guy I know with a nickname for a last name, it's Ryan Jacker. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> How you going, Scott? It's good. Yeah, not too bad. I remember the first time I saw yeah, your jersey, I thought it was a nickname, and I didn't believe that it was your actual name. Uh, everyone so, says for that. For a long time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and you can hear my name. Like, I try and sneak into bush ball events every now and then with just the camo jersey on, and as soon as Jacker comes out, everyone can hear it. It's just so <laughs> distinctive. Can't sneak around anymore. But, yeah, yeah, it's a good yeah. name. Yeah, no, it's a it's a unique one. It's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, where are you where are you calling in from today? Uh, I'm sitting on my veranda at the new house I just bought. So, just sitting out the front. It's a bit nippy, but it's nice. Yeah. Um, no, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. It's good. It's a goal me and my wife had Steph. So, uh, yeah. So just ringing from South Windsor. Yeah. <laughs> Not nice. Too far it's, from uh, yeah. It's. We were just talking before the show, like the amount of. You just added a couple of extra names of people that live in South Windsor. And was, <laughs> Literally, the old, yeah. uh, new and old SWAT. We all, well, I mean, we all play together today, so we all live around each other. So, uh, yeah. No, nah, but That's it's good. Cool. It's good living with mates, around mates. Yeah, no, nah, it's, um, and, you know, being so close to, to action and Yarramundi I mean, and everything like that. Pretty it's much like in the middle of both, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to get to it a little bit later, but we're going to cover the event you guys played today. So do you want to just quickly tell us uh, what that was? Yeah, so uh, it was the Yarramundi seven-man hyperball. It was the first event after, um, you know, the coronavirus stuff. So um, didn't get – only got about four teams. So it wasn't – I mean, you know, not disappointed. It was still fun. Um, and it was like uh, uncapped semi, so that was, that was a bit different for me because I was pretty much coming when it was just ramped. But, um, yeah, heaps of fun. I mean, 
you know, you got Alex all behind you shooting probably 20 something. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's a bit exciting. But, um, and then you got some people like me just going, you know, pluck, 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 trying to work the trigger out. So, um, no, it was good. Then, yeah. So, uh, it was a bit nippy in the morning and uh, a bit rainy and then it come clear and then end up being a really good day. And we, we come, come away with the win, which was good. So, oh, nice. It yeah. was good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was good to get back out and play paintball after so many months of being told we're not allowed to. Oh, yeah, man. Like, um, I, I must admit, I enjoyed the break because it was, I was a bit like, you know, after four years of the grind, flatlining a little bit, but um, I didn't want eight weeks or ten weeks or whatever it was. I just wanted, like, maybe a week or two. That's probably the longest <laughs> break I've had in four years. But, yeah, yeah nice. I think everyone was going a bit insane. Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, so, uh, no no one went crazy on the field or anything like that? You didn't see it? Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Everyone was, it was a really, everyone was really humble. Like, it was a good good group of people. Like, it was yeah, really, awesome. um, it was, everyone was excited, eh? everyone especially people buying new guns and stuff yeah cool um, yeah now mm. oh, we're uh well you, you know we've uh yeah we're, we're gonna get to that to a bit later and, and go over our first event review um mm-hmm. but before we get into that why don't we get to know a bit about you where did uh where did you start in paintball how did it all begin for you so i uh, went to action paintball rouse hill and i was booking a mate's bucks um it's like it all starts like that um <laughs> And I actually walked in and talked to Mike. I didn't know who Mike was. I thought he was just a worker. <laughs> and then um, I booked the bucks and I said, and I walked outside. Um, and then there was a couple of boys out on the blow up field, like the uh, speedball field training. And I said to Mike, I was like, I always wanted to play it. Like I only lived um, 800 meters away down, like down around the road. I'd always hear it every three months. You'd always hear it, like the, the start of games and stuff. Yep. And um, anyway, so I said, oh, you know, how do you get into that? And he's like, oh, that's speedball, you know. And then, believe it or not, there, well, Jeremy walks out with a dart in his mouth. And he <laughs> goes, how are you going? And then, bang. Um, then Alan walked out. I got Alan's number, Tristan. And then, yeah, that was pretty much how I got onto Syndicate. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, so the first, that was just before Masters. Uh, I think it was 2015, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I had my first novice event, so I played with James Gaffey, and um, I got to play against with, uh, with Matt Strachan um, yep. and Gibbs. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so uh, we won that one. So that was that was sort of the introduction to it. Uh, cool. Played on the was that a syndicate or? Like that. No, that was just uh, Frenzy actually. That oh, was cool. That right. was our team, yeah. So yeah. Um, and then yeah, a week after I was playing semi pro with Jez Allen and Tristan in syndicate. <laughs> nice. So was that was Syndicate? Uh, were they formed and then you jumped on the team, or was it something you guys all created? So, Jez Allen and Tristan had played a few novice events that year, and then decided to jump up with um, two old school boys from um, Canberra. I can't remember the team. You know Tubby. Yep. Know, his name. Yeah, from yeah, Uprising. Yeah, Uprising. Yeah, Uprising. That's it. Yep. So two, two of those boys. I can't. Oh, I think it was Tubby and Snitty or something. <laughs> uh, I don't know the other guy's name, but. Yeah, so they ended up jumping in one round of that, and then um, that was round three, and then round four, that's when me and I think it was me and Gaffy joined them. Um, that was that was yeah, not a great event, but it's the start. <laughs> oh, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We, I think we were eighth. You know, got got taught a lesson a few times. That's when frequency were, you know, at their at their prime in semi pro. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, they were. Coaching was there as well. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you got a taste of that. That was. We only uh, had five players, so there was no coach. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Okay. But um, I mean, it was alright. Like, I prefer no coaching personally, but um, yeah. So that was the introduction, really, and that was the back on the old M fields, Millennium. Yep. So nice. Um, there was a bit more spacious then, I guess. It's not <laughs> as cluttered, in my in my opinion. So I love I love that field. I can't wait to play it on again. I think Mike's running one soon. A Millennium. Yeah, layout. I think he's going to run a seven-man uh, Millennium on the Millennium layer, so that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, seven men's are. Uh, it's different. It's just, uh, oh, I love it. All right, I really cool. enjoyed it today. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I need um, to write them out. Write them out. Yeah, I, but I can understand it is harder. You know, that's why so many fields run three-man events. It's just, you know, that's uh, with the seven-man, you, you've got two teams there for three-man, so it's, uh, yeah, I think, you know, they just want more more teams coming. It's, it is harder the seven and ten man, like five sort of 
I think that's why five yeah, has of course. been yeah. so popular. Yeah, because you can get about, you know, usually six, seven blokes and then try and get at least six to keep consistent. Yeah. And that's the paint enough. bill is a bit cheaper when you split it seven Oh, ways. yeah, no, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. No, that's a, that's a paint bill right there. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you pay for the memories kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the no, glory. The, the people you play with. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, so that was 2015 Masters. You, you came eighth with Syndicate, is that you said? Yeah, so I won yeah. novice and then jumped in with Jez. He was captain of Syndicate. And then, um, yeah, so 20, 2016, we we were training, you know, our asses off. Um, we we go down to Colby, um, train two, three nights a week fitness, the same five of us. Um, uh, and then we do slide and dive nights, you know, setting up cones with a stick above it and you had to slide and dive under it, just stuff like that. Um, and then... Round one was sort of a learning curve for us. I think I think it was like a, a fifth or a sixth. So we still went up the ladder a bit, but we still, you know, it was a lot of draws and still like learning games kind of thing. Yeah. Um, still getting pumped by them with frequency. Um, and then I think, I can't remember what round two was. Um, I think we might have just missed out on finals. We, we started like venting out, trying to get more players, you know, like I think we got Kwaiba from Queensland in one round. Uh, Ethan Clyber, he plays in Crisis. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else do we get? A couple of other players, just wherever we could find them, because obviously we're, we're just the five of us. And that was when paintball wasn't... It was sort of in, like, a dip. It wasn't really going anywhere at that stage. Um, you know, starting to quiet down a little bit. So we had to vent out and grab, uh, you know, who we could. Um, and then round three, we won. So, yeah, um, awesome. So we changed it around pretty much six months. Uh, we trained really hard for it. That was that was probably the most enjoyable time, just like because we were so fresh and we were grinding for so you know for that goal. Um, and then when we won, no one really believed it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that's like, a like it's a good feeling when everyone's at the same on the same level and they've all they've all got the same uh, drive and they're, oh, you know so pushing good. through together. Yeah, so good. A good feeling. Like it went from it went from us like sort of you know, having a few beers the night before to Tawny to us not drinking two weeks before, like dieting properly, you know, setting up a training regime. Like it was really, it was really good. And we could keep each other on track, you know, you know, um, example, I'd ring up Alan and go, I really feel like a beer. And he'd probably say like, Oh no, man, come on, we got training with Tawny (laughs) coming, you know, like it was really good like that. Um, yeah. yeah, So round three, we had, we had a good battle with Marauders that year. It was pretty much us at Marauders and we come second in Masters. So they come first. Yeah. Okay. And that would have been the last season of Marauders being in in the semi pro. Yeah. They moved up 27. Yeah. They moved up. Yeah. yeah Cause they, they were series. So yep. um, nice. they bumped up. And then uh, Jez got the offer for SWAT at the end of the year. Um, I was I was pissed off at him. I was just like, because we, we had this plan, you know, like even there were talks of us even jumping up. And yep. We were going to recruit some, um, you know, some old pro players and just have a crack at it. Uh, yeah, anyway, so he got the offer, you know, and um, he pulled, called us all around to one of our team meetings. Usually we go around there and just review all our tapes and talk about what we're going to work on and stuff like that. But he told us all and everyone was just like down, you know, <laughs> I was just shattered and I, I was pissed at him. He could tell. And then um, he come outside and we had like a good 40 minute combo on, you know, and, uh, you know, he's explaining it to me. And I was, I was just like, I was just angry because I was still new to the sport, didn't really know much about the pro division and all that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then he said, you know, you want to jump on and be captain the next year. Um, nice. So it took me a couple of nights to get over it. And then I was happy yeah, for him. We're all happy for him. We're all yeah, yeah, yeah. But you it's know, understandable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, and then I captain the next year. That was um, that was a landing curve. <laughs> I was just trying to, trying to herd sheep for 12 months. <laughs> um, but, you know, I recruited, recruited who I can. That's how Denny and Moe got into the squad. Um, who else jumped in? Gaffy and Tristan were still there. Uh, Alan and myself. Um, yeah, we we grinded. We we went. We tried our hardest. I think we got a lot of like thirds and seconds. I don't think we broke a first that year. Ah, uh, that's when I got Fabian over from. Uh, oh yeah, Singapore. I remember started, him. Yeah, Maui started branching out with his connections. Yeah, yeah. Now that's I remember that was the first year I was in the booth and. And you guys, yeah, you obviously made finals because I remember watching you play, and yeah, he was ripping it up. Yeah, yeah, good. he's yeah. oh, he's an awesome player, man. I mean, if you lived in Australia, he'd be a good player to talk to as well. He's been around <laughs> everywhere. 
um, I mean, yeah, Duckside, every every team he's, he's played on. And he, he was such a humble guy. Eh? Like, it's just a different world, you know, like, I hadn't, I hadn't played over there yet. Um, oh, I had played over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, in that <laughs> year. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to, you know. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, um, it's a little bit of a blur when it, it's happening. Yeah, when you start thinking about it, you're like, fuck, oh, four years ago. Um, yeah, so, 17 when I, 2016 took over captain. And then, um, oh, no, 2016, Jez was still there. 2017, I took over captain. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because yep. 2015, we just started out. So, yeah. Uh, so 2017, he left us SWAT, and then I took over captain. And then before, around July is when Blackie called me in for a meeting. Um, I'd been I've been hunting for that SWAT. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I've just been training, training, and training, training to try and get myself, you know, something just to show that I got something. Um, and he asked me if I wanted to come to Thailand, which was in two and a half weeks. So that was a bit <laughs> of a uh, that was a bit of a, you know, I was ready. Because yeah, it's yeah. sort of been like oh, hinting, like, oh, be ready, Jack, I'm going to ask you, you know. Um, so, that's yeah, a classic like, swap move, asking oh, a guy yeah. two weeks before if he wants to fly yeah. to Asia. <laughs> yeah, like, um, luckily tickets weren't too much. But, um, yeah, so he sat me down. He's like, uh, I want you to come on to TPOC. That was what the series was called over there in uh, Bangkok. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just pretty much said yes to everything straight away. And he was like, oh, <laughs> are you ready to go? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Just tell me the dates, you know, like. Um, that was that was a fun event. That was awesome. Flying over there and then playing like the sport you love in a different country. Like, yeah, just the experience to have. And um, yeah, and I actually ran into Fabian, but I didn't know him at that point. So that okay. was, yeah, like he was over with Duckside. He was playing in Div Two at that point. But um, that was a fun event. I think we come um, fifth, I think. So um, that was that was good. Big learning curve. That's where I started playing with Ringo. Um, Start building up that friendship, so that was good. It was a good event. Um, yeah, I remember hearing some, like I was always always keep keep in touch with the SWAT boys, and I remember hearing yeah some very good uh, reports back from that event, especially oh, about yourself. Like yeah, yeah, it was, was good. I just had fun. Like it was like the first. I remember the first point. I was like, I was nervous as tits, like just, <laughs> just like shaking. And he's like, all right, run out to the I think the Cali or whatever. Uh, you'll make it. I didn't run out the Cali. I double backed with him because I was so fucking like, scared. <laughs> and um, so you forgot what you were supposed to do. Oh, oh man, I didn't want to run out. I was like, can't die, don't you know? It's like, don't die. <laughs> you know, stare in the mirror, don't die on the brake, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, anyway, so he pulls me aside the second point. He goes, "Look, if I tell you to go to a spot, do it. And if you die, don't worry about it. I told you. The blame's on me." And after that, I just didn't give a shit. After that, we just yeah, we just um yeah, build a connection. We had a really good event that one. But, yeah, nice. um, but you, you um, would have played with SWAT, um, like in practice and stuff like that. You would have, yeah, really a lot of practice, off. yeah. So, like, I was going each week and buying two boxes, it'd be a box for Cynic and a box for SWAT. So, nice. if Blackie we were being in the same pit usually because Cynic and SWAT sort of had that can that, uh, you know, that I suppose it was like a system, you know, because a lot of us had come from there. Um, so yeah, as soon as you'd say, Oh, we're a body shot, I'd be already out in the gate, I'd just be yeah. like, I'm here, you know, I was just like a pest. Yeah, but, that's um, the way to be. But um, yeah, and it got got me where I was, so can't really say it was a really regretful move. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was I was busting about 150 a week on paint. So oh, nice. did a lot of effort. So they probably would have bought that house a bit bit earlier if yeah, um, maybe. It wasn't for that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, I think I mean I think everyone thinks about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was worth it, man. And then um, so I come back from that, and just the experience, like it just made me play that little bit better i still you know naive and nervous player kind of thing you know it's still like don't know if i could move you know didn't really understand the field yet kind of thing but um masters was coming up and that's when fabian come over um and he sort of opened my mind up a bit to it you know like just another another experienced player coming into the squad and um yeah we had a really good event but um yeah you know, didn't, didn't come first i think i think come third but still placing still a strong event um and then what was after that oh yeah i went to thailand again so got invited to wpc i think it is yeah okay yeah. um that was with swat oh. um so we played in oh god i can't remember it because i went three i went to thailand three times in six months had the honeymoon that, <laughs> month, that year as well so oh, I nice, yeah. phuket bangkok and then on the other side the west, uh the east side 
I can't remember yeah, the place. Not, yeah, I'm not up on my uh, Thai geography, unfortunately. Oh, I can't remember. I just can't remember. <laughs> yeah, but that that event was awesome. Um, Marcelo jumped on with us. Marcelo Magot. Oh yeah, okay. Um, cool. A couple of European players. Um, yeah, they. I think. What did we do? Oh, we come second. So we we come second. Yeah, controversy. Um, no one wanted the Australian team to win. So that was a bit <laughs> of a. Oh, I mean, I remember screaming at the. So we went. I'll explain it. We went two double time, two overtimes. Yeah. So the first. Sorry, we 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 went into overtime. So we had the first match, and then no one scored. Like it was pretty much a draw. Then we went into another overtime. They didn't want to do the one v ones because obviously we had Marcelo. They had Tim Montresor, so it would have been a good one v one. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we went into another overtime. So it was like you know draw out the first game, two overtimes, and then it got to the end of that. And it was starting to get dark. Um, and the refs go, oh, we got to look at the rule book. You know, it was probably like, you know, 150, uh, not, you know, not being racist, but 150 Asians around this one book. And there was just yeah. these Aussies over here. <laughs> and yeah, they're just right. like, you know, it was, it was obvious what was going to yeah. happen. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. So they're like, oh, we can't do one. We won. So we're just going to go who come first in prelims. So, oh man. oh man, you can imagine, um, yeah. Oh, Mike on that one. Oh, I've uh, you probably, I probably spent the next six months hearing that story <laughs> explained to everyone that was around Mike. <laughs> oh man, I feel I uh, like I felt really bad for him. Because oh he, yeah, and for have, someone like him, that's a lot of money to him spend. And Ringo have had so many, and probably yourself, so many events where it's just been there to win it in Asia, and it happened again. Oh God, he was pissed. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so, tough. and uh, you know, like we were on the fifty line each point. Like, we were ready to break it open. It was the old, uh, like, A field. So, um, even less bunkers than a bloody Millennium field. In the Snake, the Snake was a crisp, like a, like a, um, uh, how do you call it? Like criss- was it the snake. diamond one? Or? No, 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 it was like, yeah. you know, okay. like crisscross with pins. Yeah, just, right. Uh, snake one, two, and three. So, we had Jez in there. He'd pretty much just get in there and lay down. Like, he couldn't really... Play, who, who can play a pin in a snake unless you're like Chad George or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, the field was just, you know, pretty much. And there was no back centre, so it was like a Cali God. And then you double the Cali and God and send one guy wide. That was the play. No one yeah. else really did anything different. So it was a really, really shitty layout. But um, yeah. you couldn't break it. You couldn't break the cross. Like, it was pretty much impossible. We tried three times. It didn't work. So, so there would have been a lot of draws in that event? Yeah, pretty much. That was, the Sunday was just slow, man. It's just yeah. a slog fest. So, yeah. um, no, good great, for, great, uh, yeah, great event, great weather, great food, all that. But. And good if you're trying to sell paint. <laughs> oh, yeah, the paint. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, the paint, yeah. Was, the paint was pretty bad. Like, and, and then as we realized, like, the good paint started selling, obviously everyone's stocking up on it. We were a bit too late. So, we only had like a couple of good boxes. All the rest was just bouncing me, peg it at a wall and come back at you. Like, yeah. Was, so that's probably a lot of factor in it, but you know, whatever. That's that's painful. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's, um, yeah, yeah. It's just it is a shame. Like I remember Mike was like at first I said Mike, like, well, yeah, you know, you just got it. Like you know, you lost, like big deal. But then the more you think about it, the more he explains it. And yeah, like it has happened before. Like the the event starts and like they're like, okay, we're gonna start selling paint, and you're like, all right, we want to buy the HK stuff or like whatever, like the good stuff is. Yeah. Oh no, it's all sold. Yeah. It's like what? Yeah. You guys just opened. Oh yeah. no, nah, these like four teams get it, and you guys don't. It's like yeah, well, man. You got to be no quick good, on like, it, you know. Yeah. And then the first, the first Thailand event, the home team had their own locker room with aircon and all their paint in there. Like, oh, was, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just stupid. Yeah. But, um, the good thing about Asia is like we have like hired things like that before. Like you can yeah. pay people so like a couple hundred bucks and they'll set a room up for you with its aircon and everything. Yeah, yeah it was it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, even that or a van or something we probably yeah. should have got. But, I mean, that, you know, that's little things. Like, once you take it out of the aircon room, it pretty much, it's pretty much warm again. Or, yeah, um, that's it. Cold again. Or, yeah, warm again, yeah. sorry. Yeah, humid. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, you can't even leave paintball in your hopper over there. Uh, paintballs in your hopper over there because it, it's, like, it starts sweating. Like, it's yeah. the moisture. It's crazy. Like, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, it was a different, it was a different world to just playing sevens with Sin again, you know? Like, it was really good. I learned yeah, and it pushes you. Like it pushes the team. You guys, you guys learn a lot. You know, uh, the episode that just aired, like Neil said it a lot. Like you learn a lot about your team, and and uh, you, you know yeah. when you don't have the creature comforts of home, you, you yeah, sort of push yourselves it. a bit. You know, I'm not like 
when I was living around here, I'm 10 minutes away from Super 7's events, you know, yeah. like, not even five minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, but when you go to Asia, it's a whole different ball game. Like you don't, you got to travel an hour and you're not, you don't have a wardrobe right there. You know, if you miss, if you forget something, that's it. Um, yep. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely recommend it to everyone. Just, we need to get, need to get out there more. Yeah, cool. So, you know, that's, so you played two events that year with, with SWAT? Yeah, played two events and then um, Blackie was pretty happy. So, um, come to January, he made the announcement and jumped on in 2018. So, um, that year was first two events, didn't play much, you know, it's like in the first year. Um, yep. Still got still got my opportunities, which were really fun. I was just learning and just training and training and training. Um, round three was probably the best event I've ever played. We had uh, Keith Brown around uh, over from, uh, I think it was in, in Impact at that point. Um, and I think we lost like four points that whole round. Like we were just, <laughs> yeah. that was that was just true stomp. Like that was, it was so good. Um, great feeling. And then round four, we, we won again with, um, who'd come over that round? Oh, Woodley. LJ Woodley. Um, he come in randomly sort of thing. Like it wasn't really <laughs> planned. And then, yeah, he was awesome. Um, we had a really good final week spinnables that game. Um, yeah, we managed to win that one too. So we were on a real high at the end of the year. Like we sort of built, it sort of felt like Syndicate again, you know, like we were, we were struggling at the start and then we, we started connecting and then, um, and you know, if we went better in the start of the year, we would have won series. We only missed out by two points. So it would have been a good first year for myself, but, um, you know, <laughs> you agree, live and learn. yeah, yeah. <laughs> live and learn. Um, so yeah. And then. So 2018, we're on a high, you know, team felt awesome. Everyone's solid. I think um, I think that's when Alan got offered from Syndicate. So that was the yeah. third Syndicate player. Yeah, so, no, it's, uh, uh, it's like, that's a point, yeah, I was hoping to touch on because it's such a cool thing. Like, you you know, two years ago, you guys were pretty much forming the team and, and now it's like half the yeah. team's. Um, well, some guys I know don't play anymore and have, have moved on to other things, but you know, yeah. the guys that hung around are, are all on SWAT. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, yeah. it went from me saying, Oh, what are those guys doing? Um, and Mike explaining it to me and not even know who Mike was, and Jez walking out, you know, with a dough in his mouth to us being on one of the top teams. So it was a really, really weird journey because I, I didn't really know paintball was like that. You know, like I just thought it was just a random. I didn't even know what a tournament or well, tournament was, anything like that. I just thought it was bushball, like you know, when you explain <laughs> it to mates. So oh, I play paintball, and they're like thinking running around in the woods ball, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it was really, it was fun. Like it was, it was exciting. Um, you know, being with two of your really good mates. Um, and then yeah, so uh, that was pretty much 2018. So yeah, 19 was a bit of a rough one, but um. Black had to step away for a bit. That sort of threw us into a bit of a uh, span of work. So it was a bit of like me and Mike sort of sort of like helping the team get along. And um, long story short, it was just a big learning curve, you know, like trying to I don't know, not having the leader there because Black is really good at that. Um, so yeah, once he once he dropped off, he needed a break, which was fine. Went through a lot of stuff in his own, you know family and all that so we all said yeah no worries mate you know like kicked on Ringo ended up coming back he played round one with Eskimos and then he was back in SWAT yeah you can't, um, can't get out <laughs> yeah get away. yeah yeah I mean that's like Alex today I was like oh I'll see you next weekend mate I'll, I'll come <laughs> back um and I convinced him yeah that's funny like the second event we won in Aurora Masters 2018 I convinced him to stay he was going to retire got pro player of the year you know he won one two events in a row perfect time to walk away <laughs> and I fed him so many bourbons or whatever and just convinced him. I was like, come on, man, we'll have a really good year. And then, yeah, it didn't really turn out like that. Yeah. Um, so Alex took on the captaincy, that's right. And I just yeah. helped him with the behind the scenes. Um, I, I think we, like, we went well and we still learnt, but it was just it just wasn't the same as the year before, personally. But, um, I mean, we, le- we learned a lot. That's, you know, that's all you can do, you know, live and learn. Um, we missed podium first time that year. That was, you know, Mike nearly had a heart attack on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you learn from that, you know what I mean? It was weird not being in the finals, but you experience it and you know, and then you know, okay, I've got to, you know, I've got to train more and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and that's, um, you know, 
like Mike and everyone were saying that a lot about SWAT, like, oh, they haven't made finals. But 2010 and even 2009, like the first few years when I was on the team, you know, we didn't make finals often. And, and it, but those defeats are what grew into yeah. that really strong SWAT team that, you know, we went on and won three series in a row. Yeah, but we, dominated. if we didn't lose, like we wouldn't have had when, when times got tough. That, they're That's the it. kind of things you need to dig for. Yeah. So and same thing with Syndicate when I first joined them. You know, we, we got stomped first two rounds and then we realised and then we come back and won a round. Like it was you just gotta go through that as a paintball team. And if you can stick with the same let's say core six, because it's usually just six, um, then you you'll get that. You'll get it if everyone's got the same goal. So um yeah, so I think I think maybe two thousand nineteen was a bit like that. We just didn't have the the leader there um so yeah and then uh anyway black black ended up coming back at masters yeah i can't really remember how we went i think it was like a third or something yeah um yeah i think it was yeah it was yeah and so he ended up coming back you know got the train back on the tracks kind of thing <laughs> um nothing really happened that year man it was a pretty much it was, I mean, it was probably a dud year in Mike's books, but, um, if you'd ask him. But, I mean, so, we learnt a lot. I learnt a lot, personally. I don't know about the other boys. I'm, pretty, I'm sure they're the same. Yeah, so, like, you know, obviously the team would have had to... Like, the, the, the hard thing about SWAT is, yeah, you've got a long history and you have very high standards. Like, if SWAT aren't in the finals, people are like, you guys suck. Yeah. Whereas, like, other teams can, you know, they can get six and people are like, oh, yeah, whatever, they got six, like... But yeah. it's like, oh, SWAT didn't make finals? Like, what the hell? Whereas, like, no. it's just, yeah, yeah. you don't get that on a normal team. So, you know, wh- what was it like, you know, off the field in between events? Were you guys, like, getting together? Like, was everyone sort of, like, trying to talk it out, trying to work out what was going on? Or were yeah. you guys sort of just sort of floating? Um, yeah. That year, it was more like float and keep the ship alive. Or, oh, sorry, the, ki- the ship afloat. Yeah, let's say. Okay. Like, just, just, just get through this and then... Because uh, we had already really, it sort of stuffed the year up, you know, like it's all about round one, let's be honest, you know, like you want to get that top three and set the foundation, like first is the best, obviously, like what Eskimos did this year, um, and then you, you're set, you know, you can build off that, but if you get out of the finals, then those points start getting harder, um, and then every little setback becomes a bigger setback, so anyway, so pretty much behind the scenes, me, Alex, and Mike just kept the, the ship afloat. You know, that was our main goal and just try and build and sort of if Black wasn't going to come back, sort of like start building into what what's going to happen for 2020. You know what I mean? So um, that was pretty much it, man. Like, it's just keep SWAT alive. So because um, it could have easily fallen apart with Black, uh, given that bombshell, of, uh, you know, having a break. Yeah. So, you know, well, obviously you guys... Um you know, sort of work some things out. You had a pretty strong round one of the Super 7s this year. Yeah. Um, um, picked up yeah. Uh, Ricky. Third place, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, start of the year, we just started grinding again. Um, we had Ricky from Tamworth. I'd played a lot of, like, outside events with him. I was sort of scoping him out myself. Um, and I said to Black, like, it, you know, it's time to get some, keep the young, you know, the young system coming through. And probably not another player from Syndicate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he, he shined, man, and uh, he's got us all looking. And then, yeah, we picked him up. So, round one, we got Justin Cornell from Impact, uh, to come over. He had a connection with Ringo, so Ringo always called on him for a favor, and he ended up coming over. Uh, he came over for Masters, that's right, because we got third as well. So, we sort of started building connection with Cornell <laughs> and, uh, a, and a, a series of third places with him, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> get him next time you know like um he was he was spewing about that um so yeah round one as it always is we always or most times anyway i've been on swap we go we pump through finals like we always have a good uh sorry prelims we always have a good prelims and we feel good and that uh i had a few hiccup games but we felt good and then you know it all changes in that final like um you know you could play like i was saying the ringo today i was like Wagga event in January, um, we played and won all our prelims and we lost both our finals yes. and um, come away with nothing. So that's that's just how, you know, it's it's all different after midday on Sunday. It's just a it's a whole different tournament. You made it and now you've got to switch on. 
and put it all together. So um, that's, I suppose, that's the exciting thing about paintball. Yeah, and like I always found as well, and it's something that the team sort of builds, is it? it's just something that you can't train for. And I, I always find like that you've got to get there, get so close, get beat. And then normally it's like once you start winning, it's then it's just, it's a, it becomes addictive. And then you guys just, you, you get really confident in finals and it sort of just puts all that to bed and then you guys can really roll through. So um, yeah, and I just mean, getting you, that first win and then you, you should be fine. You get to the point where I can look across the field. Usually I'm the one on the Doritos, Jazz is the one on the snake. I look at him and he's body movement. And I know what's about to happen. You know what I mean? It gets to that point. And, um, like, uh, that's where it's, that's where it's awesome. You know, even Alex, you know, um, uh, you look over and he's just wrapped that corner, you know, you know, snake side's blown open. So, you know, the game's about to get a lot easier, you know, or he's, <laughs> or Jez is tucked in and he's on his own and you know what you got to do, you know what I mean? So you don't really need to scream it to each other anymore. Um, so that we got, we've, we've still got that. We just got to, um, and we had it in round one. We just got to tweak little things and, uh, obviously this COVID stuffed everything up, so. Um, I think I think our round one was solid. Uh, it was a mud fest as well, so <laughs> yeah. that was just yeah. Good Learned fun. a lot from that round. That was my first mud fest. So. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty much that's pretty much where we're up to now. So um, at the moment, we're just all trying to uh, personally just trying to get out there and train a lot. Me and Rick mainly. Uh, Ringo's been really keen lately, so that's good. Um, yeah, and Black is going to start coming out again. Jez is keen, so yeah, we're all we're all we're all ready to go. We just yeah, want, nice. um, it's more like needed a mate. Like I'm not saying Yarra yeah, Money wasn't a major tournament, but you know what I mean. Like sevens, sevens, sevens is a world above. Yeah. You know, you're playing for five grand, so to say. Yeah. So uh, everyone's put investing so much into it, time and effort. That's what I, that's what I like to train for. So um, midweek sessions have sort of died down a bit, but they're still there. Like the motivation's still there. But once the tournament's, you know, let's say round three becomes comes up tomorrow, then I'll be I'll be back in the grind with Ricky and all that. Yeah, awesome. Well, you know, you've uh, mentioned it a couple of times. Why don't we jump into this uh, review of of uh, the event that you guys uh, played today? And yeah. it was uh, so um, yeah, we'll. Uh, yeah, obviously this is the first time, so bear with us. We're going to stumble our yeah, way right. through. Well, I'm yeah. going to stumble my way through this. So, yeah, so well, let's start at the big, you know, overall uh, views of the whole entire event. So, where where was it held? This seven man event. Yeah, so um, Yarra Monday Action Paintball Yarra Monday. Uh, so it's Mike's second field. Uh, it's just out past Richmond, so that it's a great field, really fun. Um, so we played Hyperball, so it's like the the old style kind of um, speedball, so to say, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, Seven-man event, which is different to what I play again. So, um, And then it was uncapped semi. Yeah. That was, as I said, you got Alex Orr at the back, you know, ripping probably 20-plus, and then you got you got, probably got me at the front trying to get to bloody 12 or something. So, um, Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I didn't go too bad. I, I used Alan's gun, so um, his trigger's a bit more bouncy than my one. So, oh, no. yeah, it ripped. Okay. It ripped. It really ripped. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, you got some of the newer players. Not a, It feels like they got a mechanical gun again. Um, yeah. That's so where that, I'm at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, my right hand's better. So, I still... I did goon hand, though. So, I still kept, kept it left, right. It's just my left wasn't as wasn't as full on. So, um, yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, semi-uncapped, uh, four teams, uh, two Eskimo teams, a main Eskimo team, and then a... A newer kind of Eskimo team, ourselves, SWAT, um, and Wicked Assassins. Yeah, so, awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, it rained in the morning. Everyone was sort of rocking up, not looking too excited. <laughs> and then um, I think it cleared by first game. So it just made everything slippery and muddy, which was fun. Yeah, was good. Sort of, I said to Yowie, head ref, I was like, oh, can't we get a 20 without mud? <laughs> and he's like, oh, at least today. It wasn't as bad as round one in action, uh, a Rouse Hill. So that was all right. Yeah, just enough to give you an extra meter or two in those slides. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, <laughs> you know, you don't injure yourself. Even if you do a wrong, you know, land on an air or anything, you just slide. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. you know, let us know a little bit about, like, the facilities there at Yarramundi. Was there, is there yeah. toilets and um, things like that? How, how, how do they rate? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Um, so he's, he's got... He's got a really good setup there. Like, I think it'll be the future of what I've heard and seen. So he's putting a lot of money into it. Um, 
yeah, so toilet facilities are great, fucking barbecue area, uh, big, big players area, like big cover, everything. Um, what's he got? He's put in a new container, like big, long container ready to like, I think he's armoring and stuff like that. Um, they've up, you know, renovated inside, uh, the sales desk and all that. So he's, he's put a lot of money into that area. Um, and then they've got a new trench field, which, um, you have to come out and give a go, man. Yeah, it's bloody awesome. Yeah, I reckon they've. I can't. I I wouldn't want to know how many hours they've put into it, but uh, yeah, I played on that two weeks ago as a training session, and um, yeah, it's always fun going back to like, bush ball. Um, you know, he's got a big fort, uh, thing there. I I haven't played a game on that, but I walked around it. It was really cool. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I that's, only had. That's all I know. Boots, so, yeah. Uh, I wasn't going to risk it because it's all just rock. Uh, oh, he made a new bush like bush bush uh ball field like oh, cool. big scrub um that was fun but it's hard to it's hard to hit people you know um and then what else he's got yeah and then he's got the hyper ball so um which he's ripping down after this event so today was the last event on the hyper ball field yeah okay so ripping it down isn't getting rid of it or yeah so he's gonna it's gonna move it he's made a pad in between like a dirt pad with uh fresh grass seed looking really good um he's made that just down from the trench field so he's going to move the hyper ball down there and then um i think we're going to have soft air on the thing on the oh, hyper cool. ball field now yeah and I'll is let, that i'll let mike break those plans <laughs> yeah okay yeah but, uh, I'll, I'll we'll leave that one there yeah yeah, yeah but no uh, it's exciting like uh, i think a lot of speed balls are going to be excited about that yeah uh, cool so uh, you know, what's like the air situation like? The fill stations yeah, are nice and close, um, hits and yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah, there's one, one right in where uh, I think he, I think he's just leaving the old one that was there two weeks ago. So there's, a, there's one at the moment that yep. he's, he was, I, I overheard him talking to a couple of the new players like, oh, there's going to be, you know, two or three along the front fence there and stuff. And you, you still get four, four and a half. I think yeah, it was like nice. 4,000 then he told to turn the Jenny back on and. It was um, ripping four and a half, so good, a good air system. Got a yeah, nice cool. new Jenny there, so um, I got I got to look around the back and just see what everything's going on. So um, no, nah, he's put a lot of money into it, so um, that, I think that'll be a really good field. I think everyone should get out there and have a go on the bush for anyway. Yeah, and it's crazy, like the amount of episodes that people say about the '90s paintball in the '90s, and so oh, much yeah. of a paintball in Sydney happened at, at Yarramundi. It's yeah. crazy at that field, so. It's uh, um, it's cool that Mike's got a, his hands on that now, and you know, giving it a rebirth. Oh yeah, needed it, and um, now that he's got more, you know, with the laws changing and all that, so there's a lot more newer players coming through. Like, uh, and then he's running, you know, like the event today. He's got ten men in, I think, in July. Um, he wants to, you know, use it more, so that's good because I never really heard much about. It. I think that's my third time going there in the yeah. four years I played, so. Uh, um, I've refed a couple times, and then that's the second time. So yeah, four times I've gone there. So um, it gives you perspective on someone that's nearly out every weekend. So yeah. it's um, it's good, man. It changes the scene up, you know. You're not just at action, training, shooting a box, going home. You know, like it, you drive in different places. It gets more exciting, then, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the, I guess the options are there, and it it seems like every time I've been there, they've it's been a bit quiet. They run a lot of the groups at, at Action, uh, like at uh, Rouse mm. Hill. So, like, you sort of have a bit of free reign. Like, you can go, oh, let's go check this field out. We'll try yeah. this one out. There's not there's not so many punters around. Yeah, so yeah. No, nah, good. no, no, there's no socials today or at yeah. the training session. That yeah, was cool. two weeks ago. But, I mean, you know, that's just coming out of COVID. So, um, I reckon there will be soon, man. That, um, that trench field's gone another level. I wouldn't <laughs> even call it trench field anymore. It's got everything on it. Um, yeah. it's really fun yeah so uh you know let's uh well yeah was there any prizes or awards or anything like that um so this try trophy and um and medal for first place um yeah. i think it was just my you know like it's sort of like just a small event just to see yeah. who's keen and get everyone out again um yeah. i think it'll be bigger next time i think the uncapped semi might have scared a few younger players <laughs> but um i didn't like yeah i think people should still try it out like when i went to melbourne uh for what, a 10 man down there i had to shoot semi and i was you know i was probably getting like seven balls a second but <laughs> it's just something you experience you know like it just changes you up i'm just doing yeah, the old one finger ramp it beats uh it beats uncapped full auto 
that's that's just yeah <laughs> that hurts <laughs> yeah, that would hurt. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I said. Some of the players were ripping and some of the players were just putting a couple on you. So, yeah. It uh, brings back that skill. Yeah, that, exactly, uh, man. A, a new skill into it. And you can so, read um, lanes a bit easier as well. So you yeah, can, okay. Uh, read when to move and stuff. And, I mean, it's a lot easier than just someone sitting at the back there shooting 15 BPS. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lazy yeah. hands. Yeah. <laughs> lazy hands, painful. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, let's let's jump now into like the actual event and the the field layout. So how how did the field play? Like, what was was there a strong sort of side, like a snake side, or was there even a snake on the field? So um, hyperball is a symmetrical field, so it's just same on both sides, same at the back, same back center. Um, probably just like you know, over age, one side's like a little bit more infield, so it's a bit diagonal, so to say, but not by much, but you can tell once you've played paintball a bit more who's got the advantage in that way. But other than that, it's literally symmetrical. So if you're playing in one bunker, the other bloke's playing at the exact same angle. So um, the way we named it, because, um, you know, with speedball, there's a snake side and Dorito side. So um, we just sort of went pit side, snake side, and the bush side's the Dorito side. And then yeah, we just okay. sort of, um, I don't know, we sort of come up with names through the day, eh? Like, I'm just trying to describe this black-looking pipe thing, you know, or the L, <laughs> the L pipe, you know. like. Um, but eventually we come up with names. and um, Probably the middle's the most uh, – got the most fret. I reckon that's – that's because now everyone shoots wide because they think they can, they can sort of get you. But the middle guy is, I reckon, was the guy that's doing the damage. Or if you got into, like – they had, like, these two little – the 50 on both sides was, like, this triangle structure. Um, if you got in there, you'd put a bit of pressure on people as well. So, um, I, but definitely, I reckon the middle guy, just the guy floating in the middle, and everyone's just focused on the out, outside guys. You can hardly hit him on the break as well. So that yeah. Was, so um, was it an easy, an easy run up, up through the center? Yeah. Well, rookie ran that, ran that roll all day, and he only okay. got shot once. So um, I think it was eight games, I think. So he only got shot once going up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was. And he's not the youngest guy on the field. <laughs> no, 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 I think, but he loves it. He loves uh, going up the middle. And he, he was good up there. Like, he'd lock off the zone for us, and then he'd sort of lock a zone off and then call out to, like, me or Jez being, like, sort of the ones, or Ricky was the other one. And then we'd just move because we knew, you know, he could keep that guy in, and then we wrap on the inside, and then I can go. Because it was mainly the inside guys. They were the, so that's why I say, like, the middle. The inside guy was the one I can never see or put in to go wide. So um, that's why I reckon the middle is the fret. Um, and that's where the biggest structures are as well. But, yeah, okay. Um, so, so did you have to use a bit of uh, like a bit of teamwork to, to make those yeah. things happen? So yeah. it was like um, I'd sort of like delay in the back center, so to say, and then I'd fill out to like what we'll call in the Cali. And then if they were shooting low on me, then I'd tell my back player, Ringo or Russell, to move out wide and then I would draw the paint up. And then once rookie got in the middle and made his presence felt one of the guns would always drop off me kind of thing and then now me and Ringo can bully the guy in the middle to get me up the field kind of thing so that was sort of like that's sort of how it really worked it's sort of hard to explain without you know drawing it on a picture of it yeah yeah I think you're doing a good job yeah it was really good like we really uh that's why I enjoyed playing with Russell and Rookie it felt like they'd you know they'd been through the SWAT system so it was just it was just like I don't know jumping on with Blake, we played for, for three years. Like, there was no, there was no, like, um, it was just smooth, so to say. Yeah. Um, and, well, yeah, you, you were telling me before the show about, it was, what, five generations of SWAT players on the team? Yeah, so we got a photo, um, Mike, Ringo, it was like Mike down to Ricky. And yeah. And all of us <laughs> in between. So, I'm yeah. um, pretty keen to see that. Well, we all had our different jerseys on and stuff, so, um yeah, it's it's crazy. Like when they start, like that's when I had a good chat with Rookie at the end. Like he was just talking about it, and he was just having so much fun. Like he loves, he loves it how it's still going, and he he loves SWAT, like to the core, you know. Like and that's why I think he loves coming out for those events. You know, we rang him two days prior, and he was like, "I'm there," you know. <laughs> yeah, he, right. It was like he was waiting for the call. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just that friendship, you know, with with the SWAT system, so so to say. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. It's uh, yeah, and I guess like these older formats and stuff. Um, it's just different. Like these older guys really have their their place. Like some of yeah. them, 
can they, rip a gun quick or some know it. how to play hyperball or the I mean, fields like that. That's why we hunted Alex down because <laughs> he's got the quick trigger. Um, Russell and Rookie have played on it, that field for so long. You know, Yarra Money, they know it. They know the angles. So we, we recruited right. That's what I was trying to say to a, another mate there. I was like, you got to recruit right. You know, you got yeah. to get the, some of the fossils back, as I call them. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, sure enough, they shined, you know. So it was great. It was, it was so much fun, man, just to try and – just to get out of the sevens bubble because the sevens bubble is pretty intense. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's something different. It's you know, and a bit yeah. of fun. You can People always, uh, yeah, be... sort of uh, let your guard down a little bit and have, have a crack. Mix in with new people. Like, yeah. you got to do it. Because then you know how good you are, you know. Like, if you, you know, let's be honest, you're always playing in front of Alex. Um, you're going to have a lot more easier time than playing with a new guy you don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Alex no, just knows how to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. When, I, when you go and get yourself out of comfort zone, it's, I think that's the best way to do it. So, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much how our team was today. But, I mean, we didn't really feel like we were playing with anyone different. just felt like I was playing with another swap brother. So to say, yeah. probably the same if you come back, you know. We'd all just go, oh, yeah, it's that bunker. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that angle, sorry. You know. Yeah, no, it's what the whole sort of SWAT. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah, I guess like the vibe on the team doesn't doesn't really change too much. I guess I guess it's similar kind of thing to what the Eskimo brothers. Yeah. Uh, do, but uh, system. yeah, like yeah, it's I I I know that maybe it's hard to explain to to people, but I know I know the feeling that you talk about. Yeah, it's, there's mm. a lot of old SWAT guys can just walk back on the field and yeah, uh, it's just yeah, it it's just take that, much to, it's that uh. I mean, it's just that, you know, and then and we all care as much if we don't win as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like we're, at, uh, I think our fifth game, so fifth game against Wicked Assassins, um, I wrote down on my notes, that was a really good game. Like, um, it come down to like me and Alex and I thought there was three guys, but there's only two. One guy had a gun down. So, um, I didn't move. I was like, Alex, Alex got clipped. We tried to, tried to, you know, nut out the point, but. And I just figured, all right, I'll stay here because hyperball works on points. So um, I think each body's 10 points. I could be wrong. I didn't really yep. listen to the pregame because it was Mike speaking. Um, I was just, like, uh, ready to go out and shoot. But um, I think get the flag, it's, like, 40 or 50 points. Um, and once you touch the flag, those points are, are sort of gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So one, yep. if the I go and – first flag grab yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, that's it. First flag grab. Um, yep. So it works on like that. So I figured if I just stay alive, they can't win. <laughs> they'll just get the body count points. So I moved into the middle and they'll still call me on the left. So I just stayed there and then time drew out. So it's another way of playing hyperball, so to say. Um, yeah, I can't really remember where I was going with that story, but that's yeah, no, I, I, but, oh, that was, yeah. So we all walked in. This is the swap vibe, so to say. We're all looking at each other. We're so disappointed, you know, <laughs> like it's just, it wasn't that bad. I was like, guys, it was a draw pretty much, you know, who cares? Like, move on. But no, everyone was like, Russell and Rookie, they're talking to each other. You know, Alex is talking to Jez. Me and Ricky are talking to each other. Like, oh, what can we do better? It's just that's, that's, that's the vibe in SWAT. So. Yeah, that's good. I remember uh, <laughs> as bad as it was, but, yeah, back in the day, you know, we'd win points and people were like, stop yelling. You guys won. And we're like, oh, yeah. we could have won better. <laughs> Always criticizing. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It's get, yeah, I mean, other end of it it gets toxic you know and you you get over that but um then you understand once you go home and you think about it and you go oh okay or you watch the video that's always i always love videotapes because once you watch them and you go yeah i told you you did that and then they realize <laughs> you know you checkmated them um yeah but anyway so yeah back back to the van i suppose <laughs> yeah so you know was there was that sort of the the only game uh like the only game plan or breakout that you guys were doing was just that guy up the middle and then delaying to the delaying out wide, or was there yeah, other pretty other pretty much uh, my side? Pretty much that's what happened. And I imagine the key being a symmetrical field is probably working the same on um, the snake side, so to say. That's what we're yeah. calling it. So it was more just like it was like a real big check off the middle, you know, like when the W was in speedball, you know, check off the middle and bump kind of thing, field, and then just a lot of comms because you got it's race to one. I mean, it's only one point, so. So you got 10 minutes to work out the situation, so to say. Um, yep. So if you stuff it up, it goes shit pretty quick. You know, <laughs> like you got to, you got to sort of, 
And once I sort of realised that, man, Ringo, because we used to speedball, like get down the field, get down the field, you know, and you've got and you've got more chances, you know, if you lose that point. So we we sort of pushed it a bit against the assassins, I guess. Um, and then they were they just got lucky with picking us off, kind of thing. Um, and and they played solid that point as well, um, as they made the they made second. So um, yeah, as in for game plans, that's pretty much it. Other people. Um, pretty much same kind of thing. I, I reckon Rookie did the best job at the middle for our team, but I think he's been playing that for too long, so he probably probably had the big advantage there. I didn't really see many other middle plays. They were more like other teams were more like, you know, wide and get a guy behind you and support him and get up the field and get the cross shots kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Was there was there many big lanes off the break? We able to pick guys out going wide? Being semi auto uncapped, I think a few people struggled. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, um, whoever was running Alex's side, I saw him running pretty hard. So yeah, okay. <laughs> I think I probably feel the rain of, you know, the Gatling gun at the back. Um, but you could, but you could make it wide. Like there's lots of little, um, it's a lot of the bunkers cross over each other, so it sort of blocks out the lane, so to say, as long as you slide or dive. Yeah. But if you're running in high, you could, you may be ramp, you'd probably be able to get them. But semi auto, it's a bit. Uh, sorry semi uncapped for the people that don't shoot it every day um and we you know maybe if it was always semi uncapped i reckon there probably would have been a lot more kills on the break oh Um, yeah it was something that that Mm -hmm. was what you practiced like that was you'd sit in front of the tv with your gun yeah fingers like going yeah i'm gotta get quick gotta get quick like yeah yeah i just i picked up my gun this morning still had training mode on so i had a bit of a go through the week just to try and see what i can get to but um yeah very very um but yeah, that's pretty much the plays. Like we tried to, we tried to mainly shoot down the middle, try and get the back center guy. Um, and you know, like I'd always cover rookie going up, so Russell would we'd sort of double lane the middle to get him up, so like a man protect kind of thing. Yep. Um, nice. Um, yeah, so that was sort of just little things like that. And the only thing, the only player that really changed is Russell. So he'd either shoot Snake with the rest of the boys, or he'd shoot Doritos with me and Ringo. Yeah. Okay. So, and then. It sounds like a, a good shooters event, like uh, the field. Like uh, it wasn't like massive breakouts or anything like that. It sounds like no, yeah, it was it's more all, about it's the all guns. gun battles and stuff. Hey, it was really yeah, fun. cool. Um, you know, and just if you could work out the middle path and work out the situation, which you had ten minutes to do. Like um, Ricky did a mad play. A uh, rookie had a really good run through. Like if you could nut out that pathway, um, really rewarding. But it takes a bit. It takes a bit because you don't know what they're watching or, you know, that one player is watching inside for, you know, five minutes. Obviously, you know, I can run the tape side now or stuff like that. You yeah. sort of like, that's what I liked about the 10 minute one point. You sort of nut out what they're doing. Oh, yeah, they're crossing up. Okay, this is where the gap is, you know. Um, whereas in the middle of the tourney, we started getting a bit too complacent and that's that's when we had a couple of hiccup games. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, that's good to have before final. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything that you know you you sort of learned personally that you're going to take away from this from this event? Mm, good. Good point. Oh, I mean, train when you have a long break. It's probably the first <laughs> one. The legs are feeling it. Um. Other than that, it's probably just taken off. I don't know. I played a lot of like different events, premiums, all that. So I suppose it'll just come into my memory when I'm training kind of thing. oh I remember that situation it's more situations I suppose so like example in the week in Assassin's game I thought it was three on two but it was only two on two so I should have poked my head up and had a, a good look instead of being so conservative about it yeah. and thinking you know oh no there's a guy there because I knew one guy didn't have a gun so it was really two on one so to say but I thought it was three on two but so if I'd poked my head up I would have noticed that guy was a kill and then the situation would have been better. Um, so I think that's what I take out of more situations. Yep. Uh, no, that's yeah. Yeah, no, it's you got to you got to get put in those situations and push to yeah. sort of to learn. That's so it. no, it's so good. if I didn't yeah. go there today, I wouldn't have learned that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I like about new tourneys and new people. You learn situations. Yeah, and and we'll sort of like you said, going out to the same field every week, playing the same format yeah. against the same people can get yeah. a bit monotonous and repetitive. So yeah, stale as. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, an overall rating of, of the event, what would you give it out of 10? 
Um, two. No, I'm joking. No, I'm right there. Um, <laughs> hey, you won. <laughs> yeah, no, ten because we won. No, it was. Um, it's definitely up near the ten. Like it just the way Mike runs the events. You know, like it's he's always there for the players. So, you know, like there was nothing wrong with the event. It probably just needed. You know, personally, two more teams would have been good. Even one more, you know, because you're just doing the same rotations. But I can't complain, you know, like nothing to complain about from the event at all. Um, the paint was brutal in the morning, but paint's always brutal in the morning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you adjust to that. It's just turned down a bit or whatever. But other than that, in the, in the rain, probably. The rain could have delayed a bit. <laughs> but um, can't control that one. Yeah, nice. So basically, it was it was good overall, except for things that they're out of your control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, cool. I definitely recommend anyone, you know, like yeah, nice. even a new new team. You know, I'd I'd happily jump on with a new team and just get them in. It's a good introduction, I think. Um, even if one guy can shoot twenty, you know, like it's a bit scary for that one guy. But most of them, everyone was on the same page. Everyone was struggling. It's a slower game. Like you probably would have noticed, yeah, seven man's like oh, yeah. slower. So it is a team that isn't. So good can sort of have those really long drawn out points where they yeah. learn a lot, they talk yeah. a lot, learn a lot, and and have a game instead of like in five man. It can points can be over in ten seconds, yeah, <laughs> fifteen it, seconds. It. Yeah, it can be chaotic, you know. Yeah, this one was a bit more. Yeah, definitely. No, you're right about that one. I think it would be a great corny for new teams. I reckon. The, yeah. I reckon Mike should probably do that a bit more. Maybe not semi uncapped, <laughs> just like maybe the mechanical. But I mean, that's what the mechanical's doing. Yeah. No. Hopefully, as uh, you know, as COVID restrictions start easing and people get out a bit more, and yeah, they keep running the seven man thing, it, it'll be it'll be something cool to see. Just the more the more options out there, the better. Yeah, definitely, man. Just mix it up, you know. Like uh, five man, as I said, gets stale. You know, you want to get out. Three mans are good because it's all skill based. You know, it's just one. It's three one on ones. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you go to five man. It's more technical. Seven man. It's just a new page. You know, like you just. You don't know where to put that uh, two extra guns. You're just not used to it. Yeah. Like me and Ringo were just playing like it was five men. You know. Like, yeah. Um. So yeah, definitely. Seven men's worth it. Ah, oh, sweet. So um, yeah. Before we're about to run out of time, but before you go, was there anyone you'd like to do a shout out to, or any sponsors or anything you want to? Oh thank? yeah. Um. So Planet Eclipse. They lately uh, load me up with all the, the newest goods. Um. Always rip. HK Army. They give us all the soft goods, and the main ones are Ma- uh, Johnny and Mike. They um they look after me a lot and the team, and anyone that uh you know they're, they're in their circle like they always look after you. So they're the main ones actually paying for all that. Um yeah. Nice yeah there are uh, yeah the things that those guys have done for the sport. Johnny uh, he's big. the he's the quiet uh, uh in the background he's, but he's <laughs> he's so there. solid Johnny and he's just like once you say hello to him and get to know him a bit more like he always looks a little bit you know grumpy when you see him but if you just say you know how's your day johnny you know and just take a minute to just talk about something different than paintball um i find i always have really good combos with him <laughs> yeah no he's a good bloke but yeah i, I, I you got to pick your moments with him <laughs> yeah exactly you know like i mean you see action seven days a week it probably wouldn't be that exciting anymore <laughs> yeah. yeah that's for sure mm. so uh you know, is there anyone that you'd uh, recommend to jump on the show? Someone you think people might like to hear their story? Yeah, I reckon. Um, I think Alex has been Alex Orr has been mentioned, so I'd 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 definitely like to hear him. But always, I reckon Rookie or Russell. Uh, yeah, nice. I actually don't. I think it's Rob Ambrose. I think I yeah, don't really yeah, know that. That's it. Yeah, Rob yeah, Ambrose, yeah. Russell. I don't know his Kiefer. last name. Yeah, that's it. I reckon yep. one of them would be really good because they would. That'd sort of be the start of SWAT. And I think Russell didn't get on the SWAT straight away. So I reckon his story would be pretty um, pretty unique because he used to shoot us all up. And then I think he eventually joined, I think. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I reckon one of those two blokes would be good. Yeah, no, I uh, there's uh, I there's was, I was trying to spread it around a little bit and not have it just so it's only SWAT guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone, well, I mean, everyone keeps recommending them. So I'm going to have to just get them on, I think. I mean, yeah. even... Um, even Mark Jeffries, I reckon he'll have a couple of stories. Oh yeah, um, no, he's a he's a good bloke and yeah, like I, I loved going up there for his freemans and he, you know, I rocked up one day with a SWAT jersey. He didn't really like me at the start, but now he's, <laughs> now we, you know, we're good at oh, not great mates or anything, but great acquaintances. You know, we always ask how each other's going. I reckon he'd have some solid stories. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's non-SWAT. No. Definitely non-SWAT. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'll, uh, I don't know if they've got the internet in Lithgow yet, do they? Or... I don't know. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, it's cool. Awesome, I'll, uh, he's yeah, he's awesome, a good bloke. Yeah. Not, not uh, yeah, we, him and me definitely had some run in, so we're oh, playing yeah. against each other. But um, be great, you and him. Yeah, but that's you know, like we're all we all we're here for the sport. We love it, yeah, and uh, that's, no, that's nothing's ever about. personal. Yeah, I yeah. Feel it. Any one of those three, I reckon. A couple of yeah, like, cool. Old old school stories will be good. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll uh, hmm. keep moving on. So yeah, well, thanks thanks a lot, uh, Jacka Ryan Jacka for. Yeah, uh, yeah. For joining me at doing my first ever um, event review, so these yeah, are cool. yeah. Hopefully we can get as more events happen, we'll get a, we'll sprinkle these in here and there with some stories. So we got yeah, through nice. a lot. Um, yeah, we we but we we do we we got three minutes before I got to go, so we, we slammed it into an hour. Yeah, we, uh, perfect timing. Yeah, no, it was uh, <laughs> you you've done you've done well to do that. So yeah, thanks so much for for joining us on the show, and uh, yeah, we'll big uh big moves coming for. There's got to be round three, yeah, or sort of yeah, round two. Yeah, uh, I reckon it'd be Masters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I reckon that's when it'll. There might be like a local round three, but um, that's just what I've heard on the grapevine anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, no, I'd like to say though, like uh, it's good what you're doing, Scott. So. Cheers. Uh, I think it just gives us that extra, that little bit of different to the paintball scene, you know. And uh, he, hearing stories from everyone, I've, I've enjoyed it. I love. Yeah. It. Thank you. So, yeah, keep it up. Yeah, no, thanks very much. I I plan on doing it for for a lot long. So yeah, we're we're gonna get plenty of stories out here. So well, yeah. thanks uh thanks very much for sitting down and joining us, and I'll uh, speak to you very soon. No worries, Scott. Cheers. See you, mate. That's a wrap on another episode of Down Under Paintball. Thank you once again, Ryan Jacker, for sitting down and having a chat with us. Hope you all enjoyed that review of the Hyperball event at Yarramundi. Let us know what you thought of the format, any ways that we, you think we can improve it. I say it every week, but I really do appreciate that feedback. So it's a very sad uh, day in paintball this week. Everyone is mourning the loss of one of the greatest players of the sport, Tim Montressa. Some sad news earlier in the week. Unfortunately, he did pass away, and I just thought I'd share a little story of how I thought about Tim and my experiences with him. So it was in 2008 at the Masters. I, yeah, it was my first year on SWAT and I was lucky enough to get to share the field with Tim and play the snake side with him. Some of the things that Tim taught me that weekend were things that stuck with me for the rest of my paintball career. The biggest thing I learned from Tim wasn't from that weekend. It was about two years later when we bumped into each other again. And this American guy, I knew who he was, is Tim Montressor. Yo, Scotty! And that's, you know, that just blew my mind. I'm this, like, kid just from Australia, and this guy hasn't seen me in years, and he remembered my name. So that, to me, was just something huge. You know, this guy probably goes to so many events every year, hundreds of events, meets all new people, but somehow managed to, you know, remember me and the experience that we shared together. That was something that just blew my mind and blew me away. I think by the, you know, outpouring for Tim that we see on Facebook and online just shows that, People don't necessarily remember what events you won or what teams you beat, but they remember the experiences that you had off the field and the kind of person you were. And my little takeaway, I guess, from all of this is just, we got to remember that these events that we go to, all these paintball tournaments, are actually just a big get together. And I think we've, something that I haven't done so much in recent years is just spend the time with people. You know, all these uh, friends that we've got out there, just make time for people sit down have a beer have a chat with with people on other teams or anywhere from the sport you know we come together to these events because we have a shared experience and a love for the sport and in the end we're just one big giant paintball family so so that love for the sport that tim had and just being an all-around great guy is definitely something that i'll just always remember him for that giant smile anytime you went and had a chat to him he was always someone that at events you know it, it, in Australia or overseas if you just were having a bad day and you needed someone to have a chat to and lift you up he was always the guy to go and see so my condolences go out to his family and anyone else that's been affected by this loss just remember that we're all in this together reach out to anyone to have a chat and remember my, I'm all, my phone's always on my Facebook's always there so anyone that you know if you are affected by this and want to have a talk you can always come and chat to me 
So rest in peace, Tim Montressa and the great number 40. And with that, everybody, we'll end the episode here and see you all next week.